next on It's Your Season. You can quote this all day long, but if you have not lived through anything, you need to just cross your legs and keep your mouth closed because God said, I'm going, I'm bringing men and women forth that done been through the fire, done been through the furnace, done been through hell and high water. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Stay tuned. There's more to come. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Keith Felton, Senior Pastor of Trinity Christian Center, and I'm delighted and honored to be bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Watch this. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, all these things shall be added unto you. Let's read it again together. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. From the words of Jesus Christ himself, amen. Uh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to reiterate that this is a review. I believe that what God is saying in the body of Christ, we have to review because with COVID that has invaded the not only United States, but the whole world, you know, it becomes, it, it becomes pandemic when it's global. Anything that's a pandemic is it across global borders. And now we're, we're trying to get ourselves back into alignment, trying to get ourselves back into the flow, trying to recalibrate our spirits and our minds to go in the direction that the Holy Spirit has designed us to go. I want to talk this morning from the subject spiritual structure. Somebody say structure yourself spiritually. See, we, we, we understand that in the body of Christ and have we been taught down through the years that, that, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And one of the things that I learned about this pandemic is that the enemy has thrown our cadence off. He has got us so frustrated because churches are, have not assembled or now they're reassembling. And now people have to get their minds back into the things of God. They have to get back into a rhythm that pertains to their spiritual growth. And God began to share with me saying, we got to begin to teach my people and you yourself to to align your spiritual man back to what we talked about. For every man and woman under the sound of my voice, there is a personal vision to which God has prescribed for your life. And life can happen to throw you off track. Does anybody know what I'm talking about when you say, Lord, I got to get back on track? I'm not where I need to be at, but I'm, I got a general idea how I can get there. But the cares of this world will always push back the things that are priorities in which God has put in your spirit. Because God knows that the enemy is wrestling you to stick, keep you away from what you're supposed to be doing and initiating the process in which he called you to do in your spirit. Because Satan knows that the more that you're off, the more that he can fight you. He knows that the more that you're off, the more that spiritual things become obsolete because you build flesh more than your faith. And the enemy comes to what, steal, kill, and destroy, not in a physical form. Listen, the physical form is the end results of spiritual warfare. Are y'all getting? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That means that God said, "I want you to build your most holy faith." I don't care what happens in your life. You have to continue to prescribe the word of God and your prayer time and your consecration so you can get your spirit back in alignment to fight spiritual entities, spiritual demonic entities, principalities, the Bible says, and evil and wickedness in high places. You have to be able to prepare yourself inwardly. Somebody say inwardly. That's why the, the, the saints of God have to get back on the size and the number of a church. Because the church, the size and the number doesn't matter with your spiritual development. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I just had a, a conversation with a preacher just the other day. And we was dialoguing. And I said, the ultimate goal of the church is not, listen, is to equip men and women for spiritual warfare. And some people said to me years ago, you got a singles ministry. No, we don't have a singles ministry. What you got for the kids? Oh, we're building on the kids. And I begin to share with other preachers, if you don't have these things, you're fine. As long as you're building God's people spiritually. You're not responsible for cultivating the relationship with Jesus with their kids. You're only there to acquiesce or to reinforce what mama and them supposed to be doing at home. So the responsibility of teaching our young people about Jesus is not solely on the church. And if you come here and you get spiritually fed and you get your weaponry to fight the devil, then we are doing our job at Trinity Christian Center. If we don't have another program, if we don't have another this or that, if I'm teaching you that which becomes sound doctrine, so you and your wife or you by yourself can walk into your life and begin to rebuke and begin to decree and declare, and you have the weaponry to do that, then I, we have done our job. Are y'all with me this morning? 
We have literally done our job with a, with a church that's void of programs and void of this and that. If you are getting the word to fight demonic entities that plague your mind and your spirit and you're able to fight them effectively because what you've been taught, then that ministry has done its job. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But Jesus began to tell the disciples in, in Matthew 6 and 33, he goes and say, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Structure. First, the kingdom of God. Don't seek fame. Don't seek fortune. Don't seek how you can get a better head in this life. He said, but seek ye first, number one, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, seek these things. Because the warfare you in, they don't care about stuff. Satan doesn't care about your cars. Satan doesn't care about your heels or your weave or your nails or your suit. He could care less about that. He said, the Bible says he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's serious about his mission. He's serious about his mandate. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, God said, God saying this to his son, Jesus, that I need you to seek the kingdom of God first so that you will be able when he comes in like a flood that you'll know how to raise a standard in the spirit. Yeah. What I'm teaching this morning is spiritual, it's not physical. Because in the day 21st century church, we are motivational speakers. And I don't, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a preacher of the gospel because you are going to leave this facility and you're going to have to do some serious warfare. Whether it's in your mind, your marriage, or your finance. But you need to know what to equip yourself in and not what to equip yourself with not. Because it takes away from you when you're worried about how you're going to make it. It takes away from your spiritual structure when you, find, when you say, what am I going to eat? How am I going to make it? What about my kid? And what about that? God said it takes away from your development. It takes away from your structure as a human being. And you say, well, Bishop, I've got so much going on that I don't know what to do. I all see like the walls are caving in on me. Well, you may not sound like that, but I'm hitting pretty close. Amen. Oh, God, if you only knew what I was going through. Everybody's going through something. Tell somebody I'm going through something. And when they told you that, that is the gospel truth. Listen to this. But you're going through something should not stop your development in something. I might go through some things financially, but it should not stop the spiritual structure or development that's happening on the inside of me. It should not stop. In fact, it don't stop. And when it doesn't stop, it brings conviction. See, spiritual structure starts when God says, I'm going to speak this in your life. And I'm going to develop it inside of your life. Now I'm going to watch all hell break loose in your life. And watch me keep developing through your life. So that you don't have no excuse but to keep walking with me and keep talking with me because I'm not going to stop developing what we talked about. Just because your back hurt or your feet hurt. God said, no, I don't stop that. The structure in which we set up is a spiritual structure that will benefit you and the generations that come after you. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Many of y'all know I love to talk about pregnancy because I think it's the most remarkable thing in this world. Carrying a baby. Do you not know when that woman gets pregnant, no matter if she's going through in a relationship, whether she's trying to scuffle to find out her and her husband, or if she's by herself trying to find out what they're going to do next, the baby don't stop growing. He don't, he don't, he or she don't stop developing until they get to the acting. He ain't the woman just, you know, messing with his finger and say, well, I'm going to stop. I'm going to start developing when they get their act together. Right. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop because God knows that nine months is the span of life. And when she's carrying that baby, that baby does not stop because that mama got laid off. That baby does not stop because mom and daddy had a disagreement. The thing just keeps developing. Although it's on the inside of that woman, her outside is maybe chaotic, but what's on the inside is still developing. Spiritual structure is meaning this, that when God has established his way and his will in your life, listen to this, you cannot stop being obedient because all hell is breaking loose. Oh, y'all getting the thing out of this? Listen, hell doesn't stop, so spiritual development shouldn't stop. Because God knows that he's equipping you to, listen, to rebuke demonic entities. 
Amen. You notice how you say, oh, God goes, you will speak your blessing to existence. No, no, no. God said, I need to get you war ready first. Somebody say war ready. That means that I got to get you war ready. That that thing inside of you is still moving and developing. I got to get you war ready. That even when you don't feel like you know where you're at in God, I have to let you know that the structure or the integrity in the, on the inside of you must make, remain faithful. Because when we're coming out of this pandemic, the, the, the world and the church and the body of Christ is going to need more than an A and B selection and a little shout. They're going to need men and women that has power. They need men and women that know what they're talking about. Not so much scripturally, but what they done lived through. You can quote this all day long, but if you have not lived through anything, you need to just cross your legs and keep your mouth closed. Because God said, I'm, going, I'm bringing men and women forth that done been through the fire, done been through the furnace, done been through hell and high water. And they don't have to open their Bible because they are moving, breathing, living testimony. He said, I'm talking about men and women who don't battle depression and they're still here. The, everybody talking about them behind their back, but they're still here. God said, I'm bringing forth men and women that have them been through some stuff and not lost their spiritual structure. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? One of the things is I told first lady, say, it's hard to get back on track. Does anybody know what it feels like? You got to get back on track. You know, many of y'all know I was walking 6.2 miles every day. Son got me. Yesterday, I walked for the first time about a month and a half, amen. And you know what? I had to force myself to get back on track. Because as long as I said it's hot out there, it would have been a valid excuse. It's 90 degrees and it's 10 o'clock. Well, that's a valid excuse. But God said, how is it that you're going to realign yourself if you don't know how to rebuke your own self? I know y'all don't want to say, I should have stayed home. Well, you hear now, you got to hear this. The problem in the body of Christ is that we got antidotes for everybody externally, but we don't have the antidote for ourselves because God said the spiritual structure inside of you has been compromised by laziness and procrastination until we don't know how to get back on track. Tell somebody to say you're off track. They ain't got to tell you what you're off track for, or, but you prophesying right. You have to get back on track about coming to church, feeding off the word of God, being instant in season and out of season. Because this pandemic has thrown us off, but it's up to the individual who is saved by grace and covered by the blood of Jesus to get their own self back on track. And when you line up, all, all the demonic entities are going to take heed because God is a God of order. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you not realize that I, when I begin to look at this, uh, when, God created the, when God created Adam and Eve, listen to this. When he created Adam and Eve, you know Adam, we know the story, Adam and Eve messed up. But God passed down judgment, but he still brought promises in the land. Did y'all get that? He, he brought judgment, but he, he didn't say, I'm so sick of y'all right now, I don't know what to do with y'all. He's God. Even though they went through a bad time, the promise that he germinated inside of them, he still moved. He moved, amen. Do you not know it's nine months or 39 weeks for a, a, a baby to germinate? I, I, I often tell first letter say, in nine months or 39 weeks, God is still moving, putting skin together, putting fingernails and hair follicles and, and heart and digestive and respiratory system. He's putting things fitly together. Hip bone connected to the thigh bone and the thigh bone connected to the femur. And she's going through hell and high water outside of her life. But God is still stitching the baby together inside of her life. And God said, I don't care what's going on in your life. I'm still going to stitch that promise together. But you've got to stay on course. Tell somebody to say, stay on course. God said, you got to keep praying while I'm stitching it together. You got to keep praying when you don't have enough money to do this and do that. God said, he that begin a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. But you got to get back on course. Somebody say nine. Nine, it's amazing. So God begins through his omniscient and his wisdom. He said, you know, Adam messed up. Give him two kids, Cain and Abel. <laughs> Y'all know the story. Cain got twisted one day. I don't know what happened to a minister, Ty, but he rose up and slew his brother. I believe he hit him in the back of his neck, kill him dead. And God begins to say this and that into the other, and he, he, he puts a, a, a mark on Cain and sends him into the land called Nod. And listen, but God wasn't done there yet. He said, you know what? The Bible said Adam knew Eve and brought forth a son named Seth. Now God said, now I can get down to business. Tell somebody, say, you can get down to business. 
and, be, and, I, and I begin to look at the lineage of how God do, does this. And I say, God, you didn't stop. He said, even though they were messing up and making bad decisions, I was still stitching some things together through their lineage. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And the Bible says that, listen, the Bible says that Seth beget Anos, and Anos beget Jerod, and Jerod beget Mehilahel, and Mehilahel begets Methuselah, and Methuselah begets ne uh, ne Enoch, and Enoch begets Lamech, and Lamech begets Noah. And ironically, Noah is the what? Ninth generation from... Somebody's got to get that right there. <laughs> God say, I, I, I waited till nine generations. Let's put it in mathematical terminology. He waited for 1,656 years, nine generations from Adam. He said, I'm going to give myself nine generations like I give a baby nine months to rock forth this new move that I'm about to do. In fact, the Bible said that Jesus hung there, but on the ninth he said, it is finished. In fact, the word, the number nine in Hebrew means divine completeness. God said, I have all divinically completed everything in nine, whether it be nine months of pregnancy, whether it be nine from Adam, whether it be on the ninth hour, it is divinely completed. And touch somebody and say, he's about to complete you right now. That's why it's so important for you to get back on course. It's not going to take long. It's going to probably take nine weeks for you, nine months for you, nine minutes. But when you make up your mind and say, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will when you make a decree in your spirit God said now I can do structure in your life somebody say nine it is amazing how God uses the number nine in so many miraculous ways and I begin to look at it and I say, God, you waited till nine generations to bring about a flood. He said, listen, a day to me is a thousand years and a thousand years to me is a day. He said, now you're looking at it as 1,656 1, years. God said, I only look at it as a day and a half. I say, God, that's amazing that you took a day and a half to recalibrate the trajectory of mankind. Because God said, with me, all things are possible. I don't know who this is for. When you make up your mind, it's only going to take you a couple of minutes. Somebody say, a few minutes. It's going to take you a few minutes to realize that God said, you put this right here. You take that out. You put this right here. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And when you do it the way I ask you to do it, then your spiritual structure will be powerful in the unseen world. What made the, the ark float is because Noah did everything he was commanded to do. What made the Ark of the Covenant so powerful and precious? But it was constructed by the very directions of the, of the God of the Bible. That when we do it the way he commands us to do it, to tell somebody to say, my life. When your life is constructed, and listen, and structured the way God has commanded you to structure it, no demon in hell can touch you. All these people here got one hand clap. Thank you for the one hand clap. When it is articulated that you say, I don't care what comes, I'm going to do, put God first. I'm going to honor my wife and my kids. All the men say, hallelujah. I'm going to make sure my wife is covered. If you're by yourself, you say, I'm going to put God first, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And you structure your spirit according to what the spirit of God has put in your life. When you structure it, no weapon form. Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And it's not because we're perfect. It's because we paid attention to the instruction. And when you pay attention to the instruction, the enemy has to back off because you know he's a God of order. <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? See, everybody wants to participate, but nobody wants to be obedient. <laughs> Ain't that amazing? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Everybody say, I got a call on my life. God said, you got a call, baby, but you don't want to be conditioned. God is leading me to the nation. Why are you leading you to the nation? And you want to speak to your next door neighbor. I got a healing ministry. Well, 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 well put your hands on your sinuses and let them dry. Put your hands on your belly and let that dry. Do something for yourself. Show some structure in your own life. How can I do it internally and externally if you won't allow me to touch? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's something about God is saying right now. Let me do it for you first before you tell people and everybody else and what you can do through me. Let me heal your body. Let me mend your marriage back together. Let me do your finance. Let you be a living, breathing, moving sacrifice. And a... let me get some structure in your life. Don't, don't
Don't you hate when people can they can they can give it but they can't live it? <laughs> you know, reading New Testaments on Sunday, smoking new ports on Monday. Hold on a second, hold on. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get some hate mail for that, amen. But it's the truth. From New Testament to New Ports. Amen. If God is still dealing with you with that. I'm praying for you. I'm not calling it out. I'm just saying for a fact that we have to structure our life. We have to structure our lives. Because, listen, we are not just here to have church. We're here to get spiritually equipped. And how we do that, we have to keep God first. And I want to say this right here because it has come under so much attack. It's tithing. How can you participate without principle? I know I won't get a much hand clap. Because it's hard to construct something if it is cursed. <laughs> Nobody wants to say that. They say, could I be cursed, Bishop? Only you know that. Because you can't line up what you want and not line up the necessities. When you get a new house, what's the first thing you do? You call the power company to turn on the lights. All the women say, hallelujah. I don't know a woman yet that will be in a house with no lights. Not, she, not unless you were born in the 1800s. But in this day and time, if the lights off, I got to go somewhere. I can't be in no house and I ain't light no counter. This ain't a little house on the prairie. I can't do this. I got to get my nail dry. I got to do my hair. And I need hot water. That thing that has to be put in place before that house can be habitable. If I got you a brand new home and filled it with pythons and vipers, even though you have a form of house, you, have, you don't have livable quarters. Oh, y'all getting what I'm saying? God said you accept me in your life, but the structure is you have to be a woman or man of God of principles. Yeah, you're seeking the kingdom first, but you have no spiritual principles as it comes to reciprocity, giving and receiving. And now you're more cursed than you are constructed because you have justified in your way that you're going to set up the way that you think is feasible for you. But it's not working for your life. <laughs> because order, listen to this, order always precedes increase. You cannot get increase until you get order. Let me break it down for you. I just had this conversation a day ago. When you clean up your room, then you can get some ice cream. Can't get no plain in that. When you clean up your room, all the parents say hallelujah. When you clean up your room, and that was a diplomatic way. When you clean up your room, then you can get some ice cream. But don't ask me for something if you, not have, if you have not cleaned up. Not the house, not the kitchen, not the garage, but that which you are responsible for. Not your neighbor's life, not just a flip-flopping brother sweet tea life, uh, but your own life. Clean up your life and I will show you things. I will show you marvelous wonders, but clean up. Stop looking like you got it together and clean it up. Oh, you're so anointed. No, anointing is not, listen, we see external things. But true anointing is when you can clean your own life up because you have spiritual structure. And I don't know this one. I'm about to get out of here. Maybe I'm boring you, but you got to hear this. You cannot come to God on your terms. It just doesn't work. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? It, you just can't do it. If you're married, say hallelujah. You know how hard it is for me to come in the house with something to eat. Now listen to this. And I ain't brought my wife back something. Y'all women know how to kick up like a tornado. She'll be like, what in the world is this? You? Oh, God. Make sure you Oh, my God. So going to sit right here and knew I was hungry. And you're going to sit right here and do, 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 do. Well, I, I'm hitting close, y'all. I may not sound like it, but I'm here to go. You're just thinking about yourself. You're not the only one that's got a belly in the throat and one to eat. I said, well, look, i tell you what I do. I'll go right back out and get you something else. But, 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 but God said, how can you come before me and not bring me worship? 
How can you come before me and not give me the sacrifice of a praise? How can you be so selfish and, and so self-centered to want what you want and have what you want? Answer my prayer, heal my body, and not ask me what I want. Touch somebody and say, don't come in here empty-handed. The Bible said we shall not appear before God empty-handed. Amen. If it's a sacrifice with an offering, if a sacrifice with a prayer, but you cannot come in the presence of the Lord thinking about yourself. Oh, my goodness. I know I'm going to get beat with men and lashes for giving that illustration, but I, I thought it was worth it. Amen. <laughs> meaning, meaning that God said it is time for the individual whether it be male or female, stop talking about how anointed you are. Use your personal anointing to get your personal life in order and stop telling people you're something that you're not. It's, it's impossible. That's why the body of Christ is in a, it's hemorrhage. And the word hemorrhage technically is when you're bleeding from the inside. The reason why we're hemorrhage is because we got a lot of people that are saying that this and that that and they're not doing anything. They want glory, they want honor, they want prestige, they want position, but they're not winning souls. They're not being, they're not laying down their life as a living sacrifice because they want to be seen and not be used of God. So order has to precede your increase. And as we move forward and as we develop more at Trinity, I'm stressing order. You have to have order. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just null in fact. We went through a situation. You don't mind me sharing this. We went through a situation that's this week. Amen. Both our cars broke down at one time. Ooh. Blue it ain't a gray one. Listen, we're out of time, but I'm not out of word. I'm so honored to be able to come in your living rooms, on your computers, wherever you're getting this message. I'm just excited to be bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope this message has blessed you or reached you at your point of development in the things of God. Until next Saturday on the station, it's your season. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We are so honored to have shared this time with you. If this message has truly blessed you and you desire a copy as well as other ministry materials, please stay tuned. Nobody wants to say that. They say, could I be cursed, Bishop? Only you know that. Because you can't line up what you want and not line up the necessity. For your love gift of any size, you will receive this message in its entirety on CD. When you get a new house, what's the first thing you do? You call the power company to turn on the lights. All the women say hallelujah. I don't know a woman yet that will be in a house with no lights. Not she, not she. For your love gift of $25, we will send you this dynamic message on CD and DVD. But in this day and time, if the lights off, I got to go somewhere. I can't be... In no house, and I ain't like no counter. This ain't a little house on the prairie. I can't do this. I got to get my nail dry. I got to do my hair. And I need hot water. That thing that. And when your love gift is $50, we will send you this message on CD, DVD, and this inspiring book by Bishop Felton. Until next time, it's your season.